In this video, we're going to be discussing regulatory enzymes. And the learning objectives are, I want you to be able to describe the structural differences between allosteric and non-allosteric proteins. Describe the difference between the regulatory site and the catalytic site of an allosteric enzyme. Compare and contrast the terms allosteric modulator, activator, and inhibitor. Interpret enzyme kinetics graphs in the presence and absence of allosteric modulators. Describe the difference between homotropic and heterotropic allosteric. Compare and contrast the functions of kinases and phosphatases. And finally, recognize examples of temporary covalent modifications. So first, let's start with allosteric proteins and more specifically allosteric enzymes. Allosteric proteins are proteins that are capable of existing in two different states, an active conformation or an active state and an inactive conformation or an inactive state. And sometimes you'll see the term R state and T state. Furthermore, Many of these allosteric enzymes have multiple subunits, so made up of more than one polypeptide chain. In the case of allosteric enzymes, there are now a new location, a new site. There is always the catalytic sites, as we see here, catalytic site catalytic site. Now notice there's the catalytic site looks different whether you're in the stabilized in the active form or in the active form. And now there's a new site, the regulatory sites. So we know that the catalytic site binds to the substrate. The regulatory sites bind to something called modulators. Okay. Now, there are inhibitors, and those are modulators that stabilize the inactive state of the enzyme. So when the inhibitor is around, it binds to the regulatory site, and it shuts down the catalytic site from properly functioning. And that is opposed to modulators that are referred to as activators. So here we have in green an allosteric activator. Again, it also binds to a regulatory site. And when it binds to that regulatory site, it stabilizes the active form of the enzyme. So there are some enzymes that have activators that bind to regulatory sites that turn them on. And there are some enzymes that have inhibitors that bind to regulatory sites and turn them on. And there are even more complex enzymes that have a bunch of different regulatory sites bound by a bunch of different modulators, some activators, some inhibitors. And we're going to look at some of those more complex regulatory enzymes later on in the course. Let's take a look. If we look at a enzyme that has a, re a regulatory site that can be inhibited or maybe some enzymes that could be activated and we do an enzyme kinetics experiment with it, what we see is they don't follow the michaelis menten uh, kinetics. They don't have that typical hyperbola type curve. Okay? Uh, and in addition, what we see here, and because of that, instead of talking about Km, we talk about K.5. So K.5 is kind of like the, the Km for um, allosteric enzymes. So in black here, we have an allosteric enzyme that we have not added any inhibitor or any repressor to it. Okay. And then we see what happens when we start adding more and more and more repressor. That's what this minus means. It's in the, in the presence of the repressor. So we've done these enzyme kinetics experiments in the presence of the repressor. And look what happens. It increases the Km. It increases the K.5. Over, hit that, boom. Boom. 
So these are allosteric modulators that when bound to an enzyme change the KM. The inhibitors increase the KM. Let's look at what happens when we add activators. Here is plus is activators. So here are the curves then for allosteric enzymes in the presence of activators and notice we are decreasing the KM. So these activators are making that enzyme able to bind better to their substrate. Now, when the modulator, whether it's the inhibitor or whether it's the activator, is a different molecule than the substrate itself, that's called heterotropic allostery. The modulators are different than the substrates. Okay. Now, another way in which these heterotropic modulators um, can act is by changing the Vmax. So here we have our enzyme without the presence of either activator or inhibitor, and it has a certain Vmax. And then when we add an activator to the solution, it raises the Vmax. When we add an inhibitor to the solution, it decreases the Vmax. So these are examples of, en uh, of allosteric enzymes in which the modulators change the Vmax. Sometimes, for some enzymes, the modulator, the activator or the inhibitor, is also the substrate. So here, even though it's not technically an enzyme, it still, uh, it still works, it's still allosteric, is hemoglobin. Hemoglobin binds oxygen. And not only is oxygen then the sort of the substrate, the thing that hemoglobin binds, but it is also a modulator. It's also an activator. So we see here that the round circles Right? This particular conformation is the active state, the R state. The squares are the T state. And notice when no oxygen is bound, we are favoring the inactive state. That we got that bigger arrow right here going in the direction of the T state. But the more oxygen that is bound, the more and more and more the R state or the activated state is favored. And so what this means then is that oxygen or the substrate is not only acting as the substrate, it is also acting as an activator. This is called cooperativity or homotropic allostery. And when you see this, you will see a very specific enzyme kinetics curve, this sigmoidal curve, in which this first part of that curve is represented of the low activity state, this state right here. But then the more substrate you add, the more of these sites are going to be filled with substrates, and then you're going to start to see the more high affinity or high activity R state. So basically what we're seeing in this sigmoidal curve is elements, excuse me, elements of the low activity state and elements of the high activity state. And that's what gives us this sigmoidal curve. And it's that sigmoidal curve that tells us there is cooperativity going on. There is homotropic allostery going on. Now, those are allosteric enzymes. And that means the modulators are interacting with the regulatory sites via weak interactions, reversible, weak interactions. Some enzymes are regulated by covalent modification. And now when I say reversible covalent mod modification, what I mean is um, it's still a covalent bond, but these modifications have enzymes that can undo the modification. So let me give you an example of that. Here is an inactive enzyme that can only be activated when it is phosphorylated. So here we have a OH a hydroxyl group, and it's these hydroxyl groups of tyrosines and serines and histidines and threonines. These are the sites at which phosphorylation is going to occur. Now, enzymes that catalyze the transfer of phosphate groups to and from ATP are called kinases. So it's the action of a kinase 
It catalyzes the reaction of a transfer of a phosphate group from ATP onto the enzyme, thus having our active enzyme because it is phosphorylated. Then there is another enzyme called a phosphatase, and a phosphatase catalyzes a different reaction. It catalyzes the hydrolysis of these two phosphates here. And so we lose them on an inorganic phosphate, uh, as two inorganic phosphates. What I want you to think about is this question, and I'm not going to answer it in this video. I want you to think, is do kinases and phosphatases, do they catalyze the basically the opposite version of the same reaction? Or do they catalyze two different reactions? Okay, look very carefully at this slide and see if you can't answer that question because it's an important question. It's an important concept to address. There are lots of other ways that enzymes can be covalent, covalently modified to either turn them off or to turn them on, to inactivate them or activate them. Here we saw phosphorylation, but then we have methylation where we're adding a methyl group to the enzyme. We have acetylation where we're adding acetyl groups. We have adenyl adenylation, which we're adding this big giant um, adenine group here. And each one of these covalent modifications is dependent upon a specific enzyme that catalyzes that modification. Okay, so regulatory enzymes. Make sure that you can describe the structural differences between allosteric and non-allosteric proteins and specifically enzymes. Describe the difference between regulatory site and the catalytic site of allosteric enzymes. Compare and contrast the terms allosteric modulator, activator, and inhibitor. Interpret enzyme kinetic graphs in the presence and absence of allosteric modulators. Describe the difference between homotropic and heterotropic allosteric. Compare and contrast the functions of kinases and phosphatases. And finally, recognize examples of temporary covalent modifications.